The gaping maw of the mechanical beast was all but reassuring as Linholt staggered backwards. He and his party rushed back through the dimly lit industrial halls as the lancer barreled towards them, its ancient and rusted hinges and joints grinding together with a shrill cry. Lindholt and his crew had almost made it to the exit when a pink pulse resonated from somewhere far away accompanied by a large crack and shockwave. The pulse completely locked their exo-armor in place, rooting them to the ground. Unable to raise their guns, Linholt and his gang feared their demise would shortly come as the grinding gears of the Lancer echoed the hall, growing closer. A second pulse shook the complex, this time green. A spine-chilling howl pierced their ears, and the metal body slid across the dank concrete floor, crashing through a support column. The crew, still locked in place, now heard the light footfalls of a person approaching them from behind. Oh, what a grand display of Ionian bravery. The mysterious voice cackled in a condescending tone. Man, that sure was something. The mighty Abaddon Lindholt and his elite hunters running from a ferocious beast. Not hesitating when taking a human life, no, not at all. But a mechanical beast? So scary. Retreat, men! He pretended to wipe his tears away. Ah, who am I kidding? You can't even talk with your suit locked down like that. Your entire system is fried. The arrogant heckler stepped to the array of hunters, stopping in front of Lindholt. The man wore a sleek black suit, coated in a shining material. He stared through Lindholt's visor with his ice blue eyes. But I can fix that. He spat with a shit-eating grin. He pulled out a jackhammer and drove it into the back of Lindholt's neck. An agonizing pain surged throughout his body like an electrical current. He was wailing inside of his helmet. However, with his comms fried, no one else could hear. I know you're screaming inside of that helmet of yours. Do you remember me, Mr. Lindholt? Do you remember who I am? I'm sure your Ionian cortex wipes those kinds of memories from your brain, so that's what this little jackhammer here does. It gently makes any deleted memory reappear in the forefront of your brain. Now, let us recall some events. He hissed as the jackhammer delivered more pain. Twelve years ago, year 2081, the Ionian Corps was formed by Sir Abaddon Lindholt, a Royal Danish Army General. Its primary goal was protecting the state from malicious attacks from rogue sect agents. The sect was a militia force who relied on hijacking technological sources to commit crimes and acts of terrorism. This included the dormant mechanical beasts used when 78% of large animals had become endangered or extinct due to the rapid technological advances in society. At first, the mechanical beasts were only replicas of real animals created to fill the spots left by the carbon-based animals' deaths. Through the years, more dangerous beasts were being created for entertainment purposes, and even for militant purposes. Sect agents saw this as a chance to start some chaos by hijacking and unleashing the mechanical beasts as weapons. The Ionian Corps had been following a potential leader of sect and staged a mission to eliminate the leader. They traced some data back to a small apartment building and Linholt and a crew went to hopefully eliminate the sect leader. Upon arrival, the task force surrounded the apartment complex and did not allow anyone to leave. They searched the entire building and detained everybody inside. There hadn't seemed to be any signs of sect activity, but one of the residents gave some information about sect she said that her husband was a member of sect, and she had seen him go to the third floor quite often. The task force scoured the third floor, trying to find clues, when Linholt decided to try the cliché of a bookshelf opening up to a secret lair. Sir, no offense, but you really think it would be that easy? Quipped one of Linholt's men. It's called exhausting your options, Corporal. And if you would've paid attention, you would've seen that the bookshelf transmitted a map coordinate to your visor. Rally up, we've got a new objective marker, Linholt ordered. The task force called for transport to take them to the new possible hideout. The transport flew the task force to the coordinates. It was a grassy clearing in the middle of a forest of crooked white pines. Sir, I've got heat signatures down below. 
They aren't visible, though, the pilot relayed to Lindholt. Drop us off. As the pilot started to land the transport VTOL, a rocket struck the left engine. The VTOL started spiraling down to the ground. Hunters, on me! shouted Lindholt as he leapt from the transport. The exo armor was fitted with heavy fall compensators to dampen falls. Now on the ground, a gargantuan black pyramid towered above them. Its sides pulsed various colors, and the foliage around it was burnt to ash. Lindholt and his task force readied their ARX-33 cannons and cleared the perimeter of the complex. Thunder 2, this is Abaddon. Thunder 1 is down. My team is raiding a potential sect HQ. Stand by for exfil request. Lindholt barked through their comms. The team swept inside the compound, firing on any hostile. It seemed to be a headquarters for scrap technology, and with the amount of hostile pressure, most likely a sect-controlled building. The team went deeper, and eventually found a laboratory with red and yellow walls. There was salvaged mechanical beast parts on the table, and a metal crate hanging from the hydraulic lift. Bravo! You finally found this place! A ghastly fellow in a lab coat was sitting on one of the workstations eating a sandwich. Now, let me guess. You're here for my work. Am I correct? I'm Dominic, and you are? The ghoul questioned. Lindholt apprehended the noisy scientist. Hey, buddy! At least let me finish my sandwich, you brute! Lindholt knocked him out with a blow to the head. Plant the arc charge. Leave nothing functioning. Lindholt ordered and walked out of the lab to call for exfil. Lindholt and his crew board the Thunder 2 with the scientists secured. As they leave, the arc charge detonated, sending a bluish shockwave through the air. The cloak that hid the compound was gone now and the pyramid was decimated from the demolition. Arriving back at base, Lindholt handed the scientists off to be imprisoned and later questioned about his involvement with sect. Back to the present, Lindholt remembered who this irritating ghoul was. It was the insignificant scientist he captured 12 years ago. What happens when you lock up the smartest scientist on the planet in a techie prison? He escapes, and effortlessly nonetheless, Dominic bragged. After my escape, I went back to working with Sect, and wouldn't you know it, I became the leader! Lindholt fought inside his armor, trying to break free from the stiffness. It was all in vain, as the advanced tech was created to be unconquerable by human strength. I thought you could help our cause now, Dominic smirked. And your buddies here? <laughs> I figured they could just rot inside those life-saving tin cans of yours. But not you. You're too valuable. You're ours now. Dominic amped up the power on the jackhammer as Lindholt silently screamed in agony inside of his suit. The neuron readings in his cortex were being rewritten. He was essentially being brainwashed through the nodes in his brain. Sir Abaddon Lindholt was no longer the leader of the Ionian Corps. He was the head chaos insurgent of sect. Thank you for listening, and as always, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, comment if you want to. Let me know what kind of content you would like.